What's up, everybody? JB here, and welcome to episode 11 of the AEG cast. I'm your host, JB, and I have Dalton with me, kind of. Kind of. I'm, kind I'm, of. I'm here. I'll be, I'll be more here. I'll be more here later. He'll be, he'll be more here when he's not playing Stardew Valley sitting yeah. next to me. Um... Because he got a Switch again, yay! Yeah, Congratulations! Congrats, yeah, you're going to love yeah. it. But I also have Goose here. Hey, everybody. And White Sun. Marlon. Hey, guys. Something. How you guys been? <laughs> hey, guys. How you guys everybody been doing? Okay. Ish. I'm good. Yeah? <laughs> so, a little hungover. But... You're still hungover? Dude, I fucking suck at drinking. Yeah, I was I was fine the next morning. I was surprisingly not hungover. So. you were drinking water. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, that's how you do it. You drink and then you wash it down with water. No, or if there's music, you dance and you sweat it off. What you're referring to is the beer that I was drinking was water. <laughs> uh. <laughs> he was drinking piss uh, water, basically. No bud. No oh, bud. God. What? No bud. And the beer. No bud. Nope. What, what were you guys drinking? What type of beer? I was drinking Coors. Okay, there you go. Of course, light. Yeah, God damn it. When I was drinking, I don't even remember what it was. It's some kind of craft beer. Yeah, something. But yeah, it was fun. It was a good yeah. time. We played some. We could actually talk about that. We, I mean, we can kind of lead off with that. We pl- yeah. essentially we played some. Uh, we played some games while we were drinking. Yeah, we played the Jackbox Party Pack. Yep. The fourth one. It was a lot of fun. It was real. I I've never I never really played it before. I like I've heard good things about it, but I. Quiplash, I think, was my favorite. Quiplash is so fun, dude. We should get, like, a drunken fucking, you know, a drunken stream going of that. I think. Yeah, you should try Coldies. Oldies and Coldies, man. I'm waiting for the next episode. Oh, uh, Oldies and Coldies? Yeah, we'll, uh, hopefully dude, next we week should we'll do it for Oldies that. and Coldies. I mean, it's not an oldie, but... No. We'll be recording, hopefully, next week. Um, I've still got to, I've got to order the webcam. I just haven't decided which one I want to get yet, so... But uh, well, since we're talking about games, what what have you been playing this week, Dalton? Oh, I just uh, like I said, like you said at the beginning of the podcast, I picked up another Nintendo Switch, and uh, I played through Super Mario Odyssey. Just the story, though. I don't, I don't have the uh, motivation to go through and get like however many fucking moons it takes to go to the next world. Whatever, <laughs> yeah, yeah however many fucking moons it takes. <laughs> yeah, God, I, I just don't have. It. I mean, it's a great game, though. I fucking actually thoroughly enjoyed playing through that game. It's fantastic. It's it a was. it's an amazing game. The problem is, it's just. Yeah. It it like like you like if I had like some ty- any type of story thread pulling me through mm-hmm. like the main the actual main story did to get the uh, those extra moons I would I would do it in a heartbeat because yeah. like and that story that main story is not very long no it's not no it's short yeah, it's yeah, short like, you know, it's I a, think four or five hours it, is what it took me to do it, it was, it's a hard finish game. it there's really no incentive to go back at least for me there wasn't for the moon and I think Dalton feels the same way that's exactly how yeah. I felt too I mean I loved playing it though man it was so it's just so enjoyable yeah like like Goose yeah. said he's he, he, I think he said it before like you just have a smile on your face yeah. the whole time like it's just a fun game yeah that's that's rare anyway. like I enjoy a lot of games but that just one like yeah it was just so it was like chill it was so relaxing to play it yeah. So it was. I enjoyed it. It's really like I think. Played this week. I mean, aside from Stardew Valley just now, but. Yeah. That's me. Uh, any, who wants to go next? Oh, I guess I'll go next. Um, <laughs> this weekend I got my 30th platinum on God of War 3 remastered. Congratulations. Thank Woo! you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I play God of War again. It's really pretty. It's the remastered one on PS4. Um, it runs at 60 frames, 1080. It looks really pretty. Uh, there was a little it's bit of a juxtaposition. What was that? It's a very good looking game. It is, yeah. It's it's super pretty. But playing it because like so, uh, I've said it before on the podcast at the beginning of the year. One of my goals was to platinum the three God of War games that I had in platinum, which I have now. So um, you platinum every God of War game. I platinum every single God of War game. Correct. Jesus um, Christ. Three impressive. Yeah. Those are those are not easy platinums. Though. No. In certain, no, they certain are ones, they're, they're not, but, yeah. Like, like on... They, you have to play them multiple times and on the harder difficulties, and... Yeah. yeah. You've got to play them on Titan, which is, like, the second hardest difficulty. Right. Oh, no, it's the first hardest difficulty. Sorry, no, it's 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 regular hard. Um, So, I played Ghost of Sparta. I played Ascension, which was really cool. I got a lot of flack when it came out, but I really enjoyed it. And I and then this weekend, I just... I, I beat... On Saturday, I started from uh, front to back. It took me about eight hours, roughly. 
and then I had to do the the hard playthrough. I did that on Sunday, and that took me a little less. It took me about uh, six and a half hours, almost seven hours. So I beat them. I, I basically played the game twice on Saturday and Sunday, front to back. So I'm just like, gotta work crazy right now. Um, there was a little bit of a juxt- Oh, I can. You're right. I'm so excited for the new God of War. One of the things I realized playing God of War three was that especially with the new one coming out, it's totally a game about fathers and sons. Um, Kratos, spoilers, kills his dad. What? Right? <laughs> yeah, I know. No. Really? He I'm kills Zeus. I'm, I am, but I'm not. Oh, yeah. Like... I'm sure it's going to be good, but I... I, I think... Always... No, I find Norse mythology really fascinating. Mm. So I'm I'm am interested in the the setting, but yeah, I'm I'm just hoping that they Usually haven't. when they introduce like a child. Yeah, I'm, and I'm hoping they haven't differed too much from the formula. Yeah. That's the thing, though. That's as soon as I saw that new one. Well, actually, let me just say about God of War Three oh. Remastered quick. One one of one of the things that I realized, like there was this big difference in juxtaposition, because I played Ascension like a couple weeks before, like a week and a half ago, where I got the platinum for it, and the gameplay for that is just a little better than God of War 3, because obviously it released after, right? So you're going to assume that all the things that the developers learned while doing 3, they implemented while doing Ascension. And uh, God, of War, uh, God of War 3 remastered, while prettier, felt off, right? Like a lot of, a lot of there was a lot of uh, the quick time events uh, were just like really playing, you press O, you press circle, I mean, you, you press circle, you press X, right? And I mean, it just that was like by at itself. the end of the PS3 life cycle. But on Ascension, the quick time events were a little bit more nuanced and even more interactive. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it, it yeah. wasn't just a press of the button and you were done. It was like a, a press of the button, I need to pay attention for what's next. So that was a little weird, playing Ascension first and then moving over to God of War 3. Right. God of War 3 yeah. has got some age on yeah, it's like eight years now, but it still yeah. holds up like incredibly well. I on, honestly on... kind of wish they would remaster Ascension. Yeah, because the multiplayer for Ascension was actually really fun. I, I'll be honest, that I I didn't play. Like I played that was actually what like I was more excited about back in the day because like the single player for Ascension was okay, but I mean it wasn't like amazing. But I mean it was. It was that was like one of the last PS3 games to come out. Yeah, yeah, it was um, like, it, and it, it was it was by far probably one of the prettiest games on the system. And I'm I'm glad that uh, Dalton and JB brought that up in terms of they're worried about the new God of War being like vastly different, and I worry about it too because when you look at the new God of War compared to the old God of Wars, I mean you control the camera, the camera isn't like pulled all the way back. And it's, on it's rails, shoulder, like, like it's over the shoulder, style. like, absolutely, it's over the shoulder, like Resident Evil, or, you know, those uh, Uncharted games, any, you know, any big third-person shooter type of game. Although this is not a shooter. So I'll see how it works. I'm hoping it has some open-world elements. Like, what I want out of this new God of War game in terms of the level design and the, and, and the, the sandbox, I want something like Uncharted 4 or Lost Legacy, where it's linear, but within that linearity you have little pockets which you can play in. Yeah, I don't want something like Horizon where the open world is so big. But I, yeah, I I actually, that that is probably the best thing Mm. that I could say that I like with open world games right now. I don't mind having, you know, an open world game, but I also like, I like more having more of a linear part, but then a part where it just opens up. I think that's that's more enjoyable to me because it still gives you as long as you make that that open area dense with things to find and things to discover and stuff like that it just gives that that world more personality than being like here's this giant open space go do what you want right. like and I just feel like fatigued with that kind of stuff now yeah it, is, it gets overwhelming sometimes it really right does. but and I think that would kind of ruin like what God of War yeah, if they did, like, Horizon, but in God of War, like, I don't think I would enjoy that as much, honestly. Yeah, yeah. As much absolutely. as I loved Horizon, I just oh, don't yeah, think Horizon's I would... Oh, a different genre. Yeah. I'm, I'm, ter- I'm terribly excited, because it, it is it isn't a straight, straight up reboot, right? So everything that's happened before, in, in mm-hmm. terms of the games, is still canon. It still actually happened, right? So, like, 
there's this one interesting to me. I'm it is absolutely. How they're going to tie that stuff in. And I hope they don't rely on it too much, but right. I do hope for for series veterans like myself that they do bring it up once in a while. Like the, in the trailer, yeah. this is one part where Kratos is basically lecturing his son, and he's like, "You can't just attack gods or kill gods." And his and his son responds like, "How do you know? How do you know?" <laughs> right, and obviously he does know, right? <laughs> oh, he knows. <laughs> yeah, but moving on from God of War, um, I started playing Dead Space. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, How's I that don't know. For you, man? I was just talking to know. Dalton how much I've mi- I've missed those games. Yeah, it's it's a shame. Um, when the new generation kicked off back in 2013, uh, late 2013, early 2014, you saw a lot of remasters, but for whatever reason, EA which has a huge library of games, decided to stay out of that arena, right? We didn't see remasters for Skate. We didn't see remasters for Mass Effect, obviously, which is one of the most wanted ones. And we didn't see remasters for Mass Effect. And uh, uh, you're right. Sorry. Dead Space. Yeah, thanks. You're so good. Space of Dead. <laughs> what, what prompted me to pick up Dead Space? Um, I, I, I own the games, the trilogy, physically on PS3, but there was a sale on uh, the PlayStation oh. Network. Uh, last week, I think it was a flash sale or something like that, where they had all of the all of the ultimate editions on sale. So I wanted to pick up the DLC for it. So just check, check this out, it's crazy. So I basically paid like seven fifty for Dead Space two and three, which I already own, but I bought them digitally to get all of the DLCs with it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so oh lord. I wasn't gonna do it. I was just gonna buy the DLC alone, but it actually w- it would have cost more. And in and in Dead Space, in, uh, in the case of Dead Space Three, it would have just been fifty cents less. So I'm like, you know what? I just pay the fifty cents, and I'll get a, a free, basically a free copy of the digital game, which I already own. Go. And now this is OCD. They're on sale again today on Xbox, and I ha- I have already I own Dead Space One and Three for Xbox, but I double dipped. <laughs> No. And I picked up <laughs> Dead Space 2 on Xbox yeah. for five bucks. <laughs> the Lord Almighty, dude. You're, you're, you're worse than Jenny. You're that worse actually, than fucking Jeff. That actually brings... I mean, you are worse than me starting to be anyway. <laughs> but um, it actually brings a question. Um, I don't know if anybody on here knows this. Do you have to have Xbox Live to play the backwards compatible stuff? You do not. Okay. But you do have to be connected to the internet. You do not. You do not. Okay. You only have to be connected to the internet in so far that if you have a physical copy of the game, you need to uh, connect to the internet so it can download the digital version of it. Okay. That's the only thing that you need to be on okay. the internet for. Because I was because my my Xbox Live runs out in five days, and I'm probably not going to buy it for a while. Probably not until Sea of Thieves would come out. But there is some backwards compatibility stuff that I've been wanting to play. So I didn't want to be like, well, I'm SOL, you know, until I get uh, my Xbox, Xbox Live again. Xbox Live back. Yeah. No, you'll be fine. You don't need okay. it. Cool. But just That's... real quick, going going back to to Dead Space. Yes. I just wrapped up Chapter Five. Um, when I first played it, when I first booted it up yesterday, it looked blurry. Like it's a 720p game on a 4K TV, so it's gonna look blurry. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. gonna look a little weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it still actually holds up in terms of the gameplay. Um, I am playing with headphones. Um, I played it back like in 2008, like on a small TV with no headphones, right? So this is a huge difference. Uh, mm-hmm. The sound design in that game is spectacular. Like it still it's creeps you out. Some of the best sound design I think. Dude, ever but... yeah. Um, I had to switch it up a little bit because um, I had the military suit unlocked, mm-hmm. and I started playing with that, and I was sort of like Rambo. So I'm like, you know what? Let me burning through everything. Yeah, yeah. and because I, like I I know like the gameplay hooks already. So as soon as I kill one of the necromorphs, I'm already looking behind me to see where's the next one, right? So I'm not gonna be surprised. Right. But the reason I'm playing through the first one is to kill time and basically refresh because I've never I've never played Dead Space two and three. What? Yeah, I know. I haven't yeah. played them. Oh so... my god, you're hurting my brain. So this is why I'm replaying one. Two is probably my favorite of the three, and it's probably one of my favorite games ever. That's high praise. So yes. I'm, I'm I'm in for a treat. Yeah. In terms of I don't know what went on. I haven't seen any videos. I know I've been very lucky since like it came out back in 2010. Three is all so, right, 
but it's it's that's the thing. Like uh, the, one, the one thing that I realized, at least in the PS3 era, is like a lot of the games that were, for example, the first game would be okay, the second one would be like so much better. But usually, when it comes to the third game, it's always like, eh, okay, Gears, it's Gears okay. of War kind of did that actually. And for Dead Space 2, I love it. I mean, it's freaking good. I mean, like the the, the story story game storyline, gameplay design, audio, it's everything is just on point. Three felt more like mm, they're trying a little bit some things I don't like about Dead Space. Dead Space Honestly, was Marlon with that with that point like God of War. Honestly, did the same thing. <laughs> did the same thing. <laughs> it was like God of War was like. Oh, right. God of War was like, really we, good, and then God of War 2 was like, holy like, shit. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah God of War 2 was holy shit. Like, eh, it's all right. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, good, okay. But... <laughs> like, it's not pulling me in like God of War 2 did or like right. Dead Space 2 did. Exactly. Dead Space 3 for me felt like more like a shooter. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't feel it like, like this. It dropped a lot of like... the horror elements to it. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, it's, it's a cool thing you guys mentioned that about Dead Space 3 because uh, Eurogamer's Chris Bratt, um, he had the creative director of the game on one of his SoundCloud um, interview shows Mm -hmm. a couple months back, Ben Wanat, and he basically goes over how EA, like, corporate meddled, Uh, just meddled in that game to include... Honestly. Yeah, it's really bad, like microtransactions and shooters. Yeah, they they were one of the first games to bring, like, microtransactions and, like, buying extra weapons, and and they had loot boxes and loot and stuff like that. Yeah. it's one of the very first games to honestly start that trend. It had that online pass as well, which was yeah. brand new back in 2010. Oh man, I yeah. forgot about online passes. It started all those like horrible, like predatory trends if yep. you think about it. Yep. Yeah. But one of the cool things that uh, Ben Wanat mentioned on that show was that like the premise for the co-op, which actually was designed from the ground up to be built from the beginning of the game, uh, one of the premises was that you were going to play as Isaac Clark, who's the protagonist. And there was going to be a second character called Shadow Isaac, which essentially was a projection of his psychosis in the real world. Oh, that would have been cool. But check this out. This would have been the gameplay hook, which I think sounds amazing. So, for example, let's say that I am Isaac and Jeff, who is my co-op partner, theoretically, is playing as a Shadow Isaac. Right. And we're battling monsters and there would be monsters or Necromorph, sorry that Jeff's character would see on his own screen that I wouldn't see. Right? And the developers weren't gonna tell players that. So they could have been there could have been a scenario where Jeff is like, help me, something something's shooting me. I'm like, what are you talking about? There's nothing there. Oh that shit. That would have been really cool. That would have been awesome. <laughs> Cause they, they kind of they took that concept a little bit in the in the co op. Like there were sections of that game where if you were playing as the the secondary character, I can't remember. John his Carver. Name. John Carver, thank you. Um you, when you were playing as him, like there were sections where you were in battle and Isaac was just kind of like slowly walking through like a corridor or something like that. So I mean, they kind of took that idea, but I think that what you described is definitely a much cooler, fleshed like, out version of it. Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, that would have been really cool. See, it's, that would have been a game changer right there. I'll tell you that for multiplayer. Such a bummer. Like, you know, <sighs> it makes me. Think, EA's like, gonna EA. It just it just makes me so bummed out because some of these games you know that are that are classics and they get they they try to get too like too there's a weird phrase but too big for their britches and kind of just like try to <laughs> yeah you know blow things so like so much outward that it just ends up losing what made those games amazing in the first place. Look look at look at Resident Evil. Resident Evil was this game that was supposed to be a horror game that make you feel uneasy at every turn on the game they turned it into a shooter yeah just because yeah, just but, to appease but the, the masses time five and you're and like six came out they were essentially just shooters so you're like oh my god you're like you lose the the core design of the game which was to scare the living crap out of you not or, or oh, create there's... intense situations like in four like that opening village where you yeah. know you have only a set amount of ammo and there's a guy with a chainsaw and he takes mo- the majority of the ammo you yeah, have to yeah, kill yeah. him and you and you're in a situation where like what do I do? do? Do do I pull through, or you know, do I come up with a strategy or how to deal with this thing? Right. Or you're like, but then they, oh, they sh- but Resident Evil, uh, uh, to Capcom's credit, they reined Resident Evil back in, and Seven was probably one of my favorite games in that franchise. 
Yeah, so, it, yeah. it was a complete reinvention. But yeah, because it, getting off the like, point, but um, is that all you had this week, Goose? Yeah, besides those two games, uh, God of War three and now uh, Dead Space. And so you're those gonna are, be working your way through the first Dead Space this week, and then uh, moving yeah. on to Dead Space two, most likely. Yeah. Um. Yeah, absolutely. As soon as I finish that space one, um, I mean, I just said I just wrapped up chapter five today. Right. I hope I hope to finish it before the weekend so that way I can get started on Dead Space Two proper. Right. Oh, and um, I'll just plug it in real quick. But I streamed um yes. inside, which was really cool. I had a lot of fun doing that. Um, I hadn't played it since I beat it back when it came out in 2016, I think, on I Xbox. I've never played that game, but I've yeah, heard got really good things. Play inside <laughs> it doesn't work as be- it doesn't work as well as Tacoma no, no what, what you should have done is like play inside of Tacoma that's what you should have done <laughs> alright all that's yeah. all you got then Goose uh, Marlon what'd you play this week uh, just been just balls deep in Monster Hunter I think I have about 150 hours into the game and that's I'm it. still halfway through the game like it's it's a time consuming game I will tell you that like some of the trophies are just when you start looking about the experience wise and it comes to like time uh, investment on it, it's a lot. <laughs> like, um, I, I, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm getting into deep into the, the game mechanics and like the build stuff. I like it, it has a lot of fucking depth in it. Like you could spend a hundred hours just on one weapon and then you have all these other 14 weapons that you can try it out. So that's the thing that I like about it. You know, like there's, there's so much, you know, things you can come up on the fly that like you could spend. 200, 300, 400 hours, and you're like, hey, I have spent my time on this game and I'm enjoying it. Um, other than Monster Hunter, just a, a little bit of Pokemon, just to wrap it up, just to finish the Elite Four and just be, uh, level up some Pokemon to level 50 and 60. Uh, other than that, um, Gran Turismo Sports, got myself screwed again over in a fucking race, but mm-hmm. yeah. So, but you still let, came in fifth overall, uh, which we'll get uh, to. So let me get let me tell you what happened. So we're doing the Monzo as the last race of the, of the series, and at the beginning of the race, there's the chicane that you're supposed to like, you know, slow down and just you know on, take a little on. bit. For anyone that might be listening to this, um, it's pronounced chicane. So if you're confused, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I, I was thinking about it, like that was it chicane <laughs> or chicane. Uh, but the thing it's what happened chicane. was that I th- I thought that I had messed up a couple of guys in the race. Wait, can yeah. I stop you real quick? Can I stop you real quick? Go ahead. Uh, Jeff. Yeah. Did Dalton stop playing Switch to make that correction? No. <laughs> he is just kind of sitting here, staring into space. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I was just letting you guys like... talk about your shit, man. I mean, you could you could pl- be playing your Switch right now. Yeah. <laughs> so basically what happened was that um, as we were doing the turn for the chicane, uh, I thought I had bumped into a couple of guys, so I gave up position because I thought that I had messed up people. When I'm looking back at the replay, it was two other guys. And I was so fucking pissed. <laughs> I was like, no, are you kidding me? I lost third position because of this bullshit. I was like, fuck it, I'm done. <laughs> the entire race, I'm just coasting, like, like at the back of the fucking line going, yeah, you know what, I'm done with this fucking game. <laughs> I was like, ah, forget it. Um, but other than that, just, uh, you know, just being playing Monster Hunter for the most part. Um, I can give you a couple of stories. Well, mm, there was something that happened during the weekend when it came to um, – so I was going to play uh, Mario Odyssey uh, again, but my friend said, like, hey, listen, I need to – I need the Switch back. And I go, why? Like, I need to get back all the moons. I'm like, okay, here you go. Have a nice day. I am not dealing with your shit. This segment <laughs> is no longer called what you've been playing. It's what you've almost been playing. <laughs> For the most part, but yeah, that, I was going to play Mario, but he wanted to do the moon, so I'm like, yeah, that's going to take about 30, 40 hours to do the complete, so that's it. Here, enjoy. <laughs> so that's what I've been doing. Um, what about you, Jeff? Please um, tell us. I have been playing a little bit of a bunch of different stuff. Um, I played some uh, MLB uh, 17, the show. Um, I new just mostly, out. yeah, new one's coming out here in about a month, so I'm looking forward to that. Um but I just kind of, I wanted, I was in the mood to play some baseball, and I didn't want to wait, obviously. So I went and picked up a copy. It was like 20 bucks. It was super dirt cheap. So just played around with that for a while. Um, 
I also um, played some Rainbow Six Siege. I played some last night. Um, I've been trying to get to level to rank 20 in that so I can start doing the actual uh, ranked matches where you can like actually have like tiers like you know you know bronze silver gold platinum stuff like that yeah um the actual competitive tiers just kind of curious to see how i how i'll fare in that that and the new they 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 had the invitational this weekend the rainbow six invitational and they announced some of the season three content and it looks freaking awesome they're adding a whole new mode to the game that's gonna be um essentially uh if you if you any of you played call of duty ghosts the extinction mode it's kind of yeah. like that, but in Rainbow Six. Yes. Like, uh, Gustavo, a question. Wasn't like uh, our friend Nick uh, playing Siege the other day? Yeah, and, uh, one of our friends on Morningside, Nick, he's like huge into it's really uh, good, Rainbow man. Six. He's actually, I think, like Platinum tier or something. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. really good. I really like it a lot. I'll be honest, it never really uh, caught my attention. Uh, the only prior experience I've had with Rainbow Six with uh, was was Rainbow Six Vegas on PS3. That was a long time ago. Those games are really good though too. I'm just done with Ubisoft. Really? There were, there were... See, I'm I'm quite the opposite. Like Ubisoft is the one that has most of my attention right now because like EA and Activision and them are just like hungry for money. So I think I, I agree Ubisoft with Ubisoft is 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 sticking to their games and continuing their long term commitments to them. Yeah, that's about not the making Prince of Persia, but we'll. Are you, did you play Origins? I played it a little bit. Did you try it? What did you think? It's it's an Assassin's Creed game. Yeah, I mean it is. I'm, I'm, <laughs> no, How no about that combat that it's system? An Assassin's though? Creed game. But. Oh yeah. Say, yeah. <laughs> I I think it's I I think. I think Dalton's right. I haven't played it myself, but I do know that it is an Assassin's Creed game through and through in terms of like that Ubisoft house style of gameplay, of open world gameplay. Right. But like uh, the uh, the fighting, the fighting system got huge praise because it was so different. A lot of people it was it was divisive. A lot of people liked it. A lot of people didn't. Um, it was sort of like Soulsy or Witcher like in that it was respect. Definitely different, but not. I don't think it was different enough. So I think I'm just salty because they haven't made Prince of Persia, and they pretty yeah. much stopped making yeah. Prince of Persia because of Assassin's Creed. I don't know if that's why, but it seems like it. So. No, it makes sense. I mean, they don't they didn't sell. I mean, 2008 and um, the Forgotten Sands didn't sell the way Assassin's Creed did. So that makes total sense for sure. But um, but they were better. But yeah, they were. But yeah. I- Talking talk cool. about like uh, stuff like that, you know what I would really would love to play again, like a remake, would be uh, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon 2. That I would really like to play back again. Like, the, totally like the Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter games? Yeah, like back in the day, not not the yeah. new stuff we have now. No, no, like the old one, like like, like the, the old old one. Yeah. yeah. How many Tom Clancy games in the last uh, year? <laughs> Siege, Ghost, <laughs> Splinter. I mean, I want them to bring back Splinter Cell personally. That's oh, my just, favorite Tom Clancy game. A real like, quick plug. Splinter. No, a real quick plug. Uh, actually, two things. Um, Splinter Cell Conviction, which I bought like for ten bucks, like I don't know, a year ago, right. hoping that it, hoping that it will be backwards compatible it's on backwards Xbox One. Now. It's backwards compatible now. And in regards to Rainbow Siege, it never really called my attention. Um, but they have this new mode, it's like a zombie mode. Yes, and it, outbreak. It looks, yeah, yeah, outbreak. Yeah. Like, like it's. It reminds me a lot it's of like Extinction Left Dead. from Yeah, Left 4 Dead and Extinction from Call of Duty Ghosts. Of nice. Yeah, Nick said that. Nice. Yeah, Nick said that exact same thing you just said Siege? about Extinction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Siege is is. Got a pretty good it has a very very strong community, honestly. Um, and they said that I have I, to give... they announced that they're not going to be actually like making a legitimate sequel. They are just going to be. It's it's essentially at this point is a true games as service. It is a game that they're just going to keep expanding upon. I like that. That's what I wish they would have done with Destiny. I mean, they they are, but not to the extent that Ra- honestly, Rainbow Six is doing a better job of it. To be fair, um, when Siege uh, launched like two years ago, mm-hmm. it was like in the doldrums. I mean, this game got yeah. a bad rap, and, oh. and Ubisoft yeah, it, stuck with it, it and they the invested they stuck absolutely. With it. Yep. Yeah. Well, same with the so kudos to them. Yeah, they did, they yeah, did some the, fucking necromancy shit. They have <laughs> supported the division. They've supported it, but not nearly as much as they've supported they kind of Rainbow Six. Recently, they, they, yeah, they did. They had this huge like 1.8 update back in uh, October of last year. Yeah. Um, actually, my friend Justin and I are, are like I honestly think if they, if they took some of the lessons that that Bungie has learned with Destiny 
and kind of reformatted the how division has worked. They did. Like, they did that. They did, yeah, they did but that. If yeah. they if they continue to build upon that and actually do like a division two, I it could honestly it has the potential with with the way Bungie's community has been right now with Destiny two, um, it has the potential to dethrone it. But and my thing, I don't want to talk about Destiny. Well, I was actually that you were you were I, you were almost stepping on my segue. But yeah, I've got one thing to add about that, and I don't want to go into it too deep. I know they're fixing the game, mm-hmm. but I think for me personally, it might be a little too late because I don't have any motivation to play that at all. Even though I know they're fixing it and they're working on all that shit, there's a zero motivation for me to pop on and play. Well, I had I had some motivation, so I played some Crimson Days this week. How was that? How it's was good. that, man? It's 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 two v two, multiplayer. It it, I mean it was it was fine. I got some cool items. I got two v two. A new fun like Halo. Huh? Was it fun like Halo two v two? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, it just might be too late for me now. I I think I might be moving on from the game. I I don't know. We'll see. But, but. Yeah. That's the way I, I feel currently. That's kind of, that's kind of how I feel too. Like I, I, I had fun with it, but it wasn't like I wasn't like, oh my god, I need to, I need to play this as much as I possibly can because this event's only a week long. Yeah. Like, that I was played it question. for a couple days, like when it first launched, to do all my my weekly milestones, and then once yeah. I finished my weekly milestones, I'm like, I don't really care anymore. Honestly, yeah, I, that, that's what I wanted to ask. I'm like, yeah, you played it, but like, do you have that, oh I'm back feeling like oh no. I'm back. No. Okay. No. no. Like, it's... honestly, Rainbow Six has the potential to take the place of Destiny for me in terms of, like, one of those online shooters that I can just pick up and play for a couple months and then put it back down and stuff like that. So, I just want to say me... something real quick. I'm sorry, Marlon. I'll finish. Go, go ahead. Let me just say something real quick in terms of um, uh, Destiny 2 and sequels to uh, games of service types. I, I always wanted a Destiny 2, but now I disagree with that mindset. Yeah. I think they should just build upon it because, like, when you look at um, Destiny 1 and Destiny 2, it was two different teams, right? Yeah. So you had a small life team that worked on Destiny 1 throughout the entire three years, right? They were just focused on fixing and expanding and bringing us content for Destiny 1. And then you had a completely separate team just, you know, cordoned off from the live team working on Destiny 2. And the rubber never really met the road between these two teams because all of the stuff that we wanted, the live team gave to us right sooner or later, but we got it. And the other team, which of course is still Bungie, working on Destiny 2, wasn't able to implement those changes on the sequel because th- there are things that the live team gave us like custom matches um, and different playlists for PvP right. that were not in Destiny 2. And you're like... How can that not be in Destiny 2? Like you had it at the end of the first game. Right. And that's because and that's because of the composition of both teams. Yeah, I'll tell you this. Uh, a lot of the problems that I see in Destiny 2. Like, I don't I don't want to I don't wanna really want to go down this road, guys. I don't. I, that's, that's why I, I know. Quit, but I I, what I was trying to go for, for is that a lot of the things that they tried to do uh I don't want to say it like this, but a lot of the things that the Destiny 2 tried to do, Monster Hunter did it much better. Honestly, if you ask okay. me and um, and I'll tell you the best uh, way you can do it. When all the Destiny 2 streamers, YouTubers, are doing Monster Hunter World, that tells you something. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah a lot of people have migrated over to, over to but that. But other than all that stuff, Destiny Crimson Days and Rainbow Six and MLB, I picked up Bayonetta on the Switch. Yeah, how did that go for you, man? I am on Chapter 4. Um, I, now, I played... I remember finishing Bayonetta back in 2010 or 2009? 2009, when it first came out. Yeah. I Bayonetta. remember finishing the game. I don't remember a damn thing about it. <laughs> um, because I'm pretty sure Bayonetta came out the same day as the original Darksiders, which grabbed my attention and did not let it go. And it, like, I must have still been in the mindset of Dark Siders after I even started playing Bayonetta. Um, but going back to it now, you know, having, you know, eight years of gaming, you know, knowledge under my belt, um, I really like it. It's good. It's fast paced. It's pretty. Um, 
you know, for being an, an older game, um, the remastered version is really good. The ported version, it runs mm-hmm. so much better because it runs at 60 frames a second um, docked and, like, it drops to, like, it tries to run at 60 undocked, but it drops to usually about, like, low 50s, high 40s, something like that. So Which is still serviceable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's still, it runs better than it did back in the day because back in the day, it ran at 30 frames locked. So. Wow. On the 360. That's so good. So. Um, Wait, yeah, on the 360 I'm, was locked? No, no way. Because I, I have it, it locked. On, no, I have it on backwards compa- compatibility and it plays at 60 on okay. Xbox One. Maybe, maybe it wasn't locked at 60, maybe. but I don't think that was a 30 hertz game. I thought it was, but I might be wrong. Um, but yeah, I've never, I, I, you know, I, I've never, I don't remember a lot about it, but I also never played Bayonetta 2. So I'm going to be picking that one. I wanted to finish Bayonetta 1 first, and then I was going to pick up Bayonetta 2. So how's the pricing scheme on that? Is okay. it like 30 It's for super each? weird. It is weird. Okay. It's so if you buy it physically, if you buy it in the store, physical disc, or physical cartridge, rather, you get Bayonetta uh-huh. 2 on the cartridge, and you get yeah. a download code for Bayonetta 1 for, for $60. Oh, nice. nice. Okay, great. All right. If you, if you buy Bayonetta 2 digitally, you automatically get a discount for Bayonetta 1 to $10, and you pay 50 for the digital version of Bayonetta 2. So you're still paying $60. 50 bucks. Okay, that's cool. Or... You can buy Bayonetta 1 first for $30, and then it discounts Bayonetta 2 to $30. Oh, okay, so, you, so you're still paying 60 regardless. You, yeah, no sense. matter which way you buy it, you're paying 60 The way I, I actually buy. didn't know that. That's the way, cool. the, yeah, the reason that I did it the way I did was because I, I only wanted to spend 30 bucks right now. Because I know I'm only going to play Bayonetta 1 first. Once I finish sense. Bayonetta, then I'll spend the other $30 and get Bayonetta 2. Is there I an mean, expiration date at all on that discount? What's that? Is there like an expiration date on that discount? Not that I, I don't believe so. Because, I mean, I thought it was like, I, I was afraid it was like a pre-purchase thing. Like, if you pre-order it, you only get that discount. But, I mean, the game's out, and I looked in the store, and it still says, you know, Bayonetta 2 discounted 40% for twenty nine ninety nine. So... Uh, yeah. Like I was actually right. gonna buy it physically because of that because I thought like because it's eighty bucks. Because that way, it. that way, if you play Bayonetta one, you're like yeah. I don't really care for this. You're only out thirty dollars and you're not out sixty. That's fucking yeah. Crazy. So I was actually worried about that. Cause yep. I was gonna go buy it physically. Yep. Cause it makes more sense for me to buy it digitally than to be on the road. And I don't want to cartel. Right. I don't have to. So right. This is gonna be the one console where I buy digitally most of the time. I yeah. Guess. I've yeah. honestly pretty much decided like. Almost across the board, like universally, even on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, I'm just going to go digital. I game share with enough people that it doesn't really, like, it doesn't make sense for me to buy physical games anymore. I'm old school, man. I like it's sort of like he has, like, a Best Buy with, like, a Best Buy Gamers Club unlock, but with his game share friends or something. Yeah. <laughs> or, just, or I just wish they had the, the same prices that you're paying for the physical games. You get to pay, you play, pay for the digital prices. Yeah, if that were to happen, yeah. then I would always go digital. But oh, oh, I, yeah. I'm I'm old school like Dalton in that way too. I I, mean, I, I, like, I, I like, I like the physical too, media. I love like collecting steel books and stuff like that. But I just you know if if my buddy and I both want the same game, we just oh, no, we it split it thirty bucks a piece. Yeah. So it's like it makes sense. To you know. That way. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest. For like handheld, it makes perfect sense. Like I originally wanted to go digital only on Switch, but I'm just like man, I, I see myself buying a lot of games for the system, and over the over time that GCU. Uh, discount is going to help my pocket. Yeah, definitely. So, but so, no, I, I agree. Like you don't want to be lugging those little carts around, and if you get lost, you're out sixty bucks. You know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, it's easier because uh, my I have two brothers, so all two of them have PlayStation. So when they buy games, I just pick them up from them and just use it. So there's like my pile, their pile. So it's like, all right, you know, just pop it in and play some of those, and I don't have to worry about not spending sixty bucks for every game that comes out that I want to play. You know, right. they're like. Oh, you want to? Really like, oh, you want to play that one? Yeah, sure, we'll buy. It. Like, so for like me, not like doing physical stuff. Yeah, like, it's on the way out. It, it eventually. It may not ever go it, probably maybe in the ten next ten years, I could see it. Yeah, maybe not next generation, but it'll be the, probably the generation after that where it'll pretty much all be like digital or streaming or. I mean, I, I was I was reading I, I was listening to a <laughs> podcast, um, and they were talking that. Ubisoft was saying that 56% of their game sales right now are digital. Yeah. Which that oh. that was an astounding number to me. 
Well, just look at the PlayStation Store, though. There's always sales on the PlayStation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then Steam is even better yet. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it makes, especially on PC, it makes more sense to buy digital. But Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, console games. Like, there's a Flash sale going on on PlayStation right now, and then there's an Ubisoft sale. Yeah. yeah. And there was a yeah. suitcase yeah. sale. Yeah. So... There's a flash sale every month on on PlayStation Network, yeah. and there's sales on when Xbox the Live as well. Sale went on for like fucking six weeks. Yeah, and there was a lot of good <laughs> shit. And it was a lot of stuff that, like, if you hadn't bought it when it first came out, you could get it for less yeah. than half price. So. Which is that's great for I'm, people. That's what I'm for trying to only. trying to get better at this year. I've been good. One Me game too. a month. I've only done one game a month. I've been, been good well, too. Well, technically, Bayonetta and Shadow of the Colossus were both in February, but yeah. still, I only spent seventy bucks combined on those. So for me, it was um, I was I was seeing like the sale. And I was like, oh man, I would love. I was thinking about getting the MLB the show, but that, then I thought to myself, you know what? Nah, I'm, I'm not gonna play a baseball game. You know, I, I suck at those games for the longest yeah, like, time. I want to get I want to get the show eighteen on like the day it comes out, but I'm I'm almost like. Because Far Cry comes out, I think it's either that same the same day, yeah, day that's, that's same a thing. Day. or a couple yep. days later. Oh, I, I'm actually really excited to play this Far Cry. I am too. I, I've, no, heard, yeah. I have already pre-ordered digitally on my PS4. I'm not even a huge Far Cry fan. And we've already kind For of me, it's the show. And I, yeah. I actually plan to stream that game yeah. on yeah, our channel. That'll be a really, I have a feeling those games are always fun because they're so like, like, not like unscripted. Like some of the crazy like shenanigans you can get into in the Far Cry games would be really fun to stream. Well, I, I like, like I said, I liked Far Cry 3 quite a bit. I, yeah. I did not care for 4 or Primal. I didn't but, care for Primal, but 4 was still pretty darn good. If you're a fan of 3, if you get the season, the gold season edition of Far Cry 5, mm-hmm. you'll get a remastered of um, Far Cry 3. Yeah. yeah. I, I wasn't even going to buy it until, I'm not going to go into it, but I saw what it was about, and the guy, it got me pretty excited. Yes. So, um... Yeah, I'm pretty damn excited about it. I'm, I'm I'm curious to see which like direction they take that. I'm sure there's gonna be a little bit of outcry from it, but oh, absolutely. But, but the, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, the last thing I really wanted to mention um, with Bayonetta, I was super excited because I was gonna play it. I was gonna because I mostly play most of my stuff hand on the handheld. How does it hold up in handheld mode? Is it? It does. Do you like I mean, it? it's fine. It's and that's what I, like so far. That's all I've played it in because I was gonna get a pro controller. So okay. I was going to my local GameStop on um, Friday, and I was going to, okay. or no, Thursday, excuse me, and I was going to um, get a, pro con- a pre-owned Pro Controller, because they were like, with my discount, it was like I have the Elite membership or whatever, um, which is the new one above the Pro membership. Yeah, I know, I it's so stupid. Wow. It's 20% off, it's 20% off pre-owned <sighs> games and accessories, yeah, which isn't... You're right. I mostly buy new too, so I was like, "Ah, oh, this doesn't really make like the Gamers Club from Best Buy is way better of a promotion for me." Yeah. Um, but I was like, "I'll go get a pre-owned Pro controller because they said that Sandusky or the Sandusky, Sandusky. GameStop had one." <laughs> so I get there and we're not mentioning any locations. yeah, we're not mentioning any locations, but you know, I won't say the state, but it's not rocket science. It's definitely um, not Ohio. It's. <laughs> It doesn't. It rhymes with Shmoshmayo. <laughs> I won't mention the state. Two seconds later, mention yeah. the state. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, all the um, Well, I mentioned. The state. Yeah, he said the state. I didn't say the state. I never said I wasn't gonna mention the state. But anyway. <laughs> but so I go in and I they and I put like a, a hold on one because they said they only had like one in stock. So I was like, I'll I'll send like a hold oh, request so that way it's there when I get there. So I get there, and somebody took in the wired one incorrect. Wow. As, a, oh. as the like the 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 seventy dollar version and everything. Um, so it was one of the wired ones. So I'm like, um, I don't think so. Like, I'm I have good. a thanks. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, had they had the one that you wanted, how much would you have paid? Forty seven ninety nine plus tax. For for a brand new copy or a used copy? I mean, not a copy, a a a, a brand Pre-owned. new pro controller or used. Pre owned. Pre-owned. Um, real quick, because I know you buy a lot of games. Amazon. You should no, you should well Amazon, yeah, no, Amazon you should has seriously. Amazon for fifty right now, actually. Yeah, you should follow Wario sixty four. Yeah. I mean, this dude tweets deals all the time, like think, all uh, the time. The AEG channel. I think the AEG channel does follow him actually, or yeah, the AEG so. Twitter rather. Yeah. Um, but but speaking about. GameStop. Well, yeah. So, so yeah. So I go in there and they didn't have the one I wanted. So I was. He's like, well, I can order one for you and you get free two day shipping. 
And I'm like, well, I kind of want it for tomorrow because Bayonetta comes out on Friday. So he's, I'm like, but I'm like, I'll just screw it. Screw it. I'll just play the handheld for a couple days and I'll just order it. So that way I know I'm getting the one I want. Yeah. So it shows up in the mail today. It didn't have the fucking cord with it. Oh, man. Well, that's... Yeah. So I got to hook it up to the system to sync it. It's pre-owned for you. Yep. God, Lord Almighty, you got fucked. Yeah. <laughs> what you should have gotten, um, Jeff, you should have gotten the uh, Chronicles of... Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 one, because that one actually has a revised D-pad. Because, like, the... Uh, I actually didn't know that. The, the D-pad on the original one, like, it has, like, a very small defect... Like, over time, it'll come up eventually, huh. where, like, how can I explain it? Like, there's blind spots on the yep. D-pad, yep. which they fix with the new one. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, and... so I was I was pretty salty. So I returned it and got um, some PlayStation money and the $30 to buy Bayonetta 2 on the Switch. Because <laughs> I'm just like... Screw it, I'm done with this thing, basically. Yeah, basically, I'm just like, you know what, I'll get one eventually. I'm buying one eventually. Yeah, like, I'll get one, like, probably the next time I feel like I'm, like, when the next big game comes out that I know I'm going to want it for, that's probably when I'll just... Honestly, I just love playing in portable mode, so I, I probably won't even buy one until next winter when I'm sitting on my, on my couch right. again. But... Yeah. That's honestly, I, pro- I might not, I just might wait and just get one for Christmas next year. Yeah. But, you know, I was, I was really disappointed because... You know, I, I that bet. That being said, Jeff, how I, did you used to work? <laughs> I used to work at GameStop. Oh. Yeah, um, and that's a that's a yeah. great segue that you just brought up because right. that's one of the, that's like the main topic that I really wanted to talk about on the on the show today was like experiences at GameStop and seeing oh. as our own seeing as our own JB is a former GameStop alumni. Yep. Right. So I thought it'd be cool to ask him questions regarding GameStop as a company. Yeah, I mean, feel free to you know ask away. I'll ask, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, answer them as honestly as I can. So I want to be real clear. I don't want this to be. I mean, you guys can do whatever you want, but like me a GameStop I, bashing hour. Yeah, I don't want it. I don't. I don't. I don't want it to be a game. I don't really bashing. want it to be that either because truth be told, like a lot of a lot of that job was actually really good and really fun, and it it allowed me to basically talk about my passion for. 40 hours a week. Yeah. Yeah, for the but, most part, yeah. Not gonna lie, some real shit happened. So, <laughs> real shit. You know, the one thing that, uh, that I want to ask you, Jeff, about with GameStop, what is, like, the dumbest request you ever got in, this, in GameStop? Just, like, honestly, the worst the worst time of the year is, like, Christmas time when, like, you know, you know, grandmas and grandparents come in and ask for, like, the most random... Like, I've had people ask for, like, you know those handheld poker games that they have? Yeah. I've had, like, <laughs> old people come in and ask if we carry them and stuff. <laughs> or, like, leapfrog pads for kids and stuff like that. Like, God, Lord. Just the weirdest, like, what the hell kind of stuff. And then it's just, like, you get, like games traded in that are just in the worst condition and you're like i don't understand how you yeah. like how this thing even still plays and you're wanting me to give you you know 10 bucks for it when it's a five-year-old game a five-year-old call of duty game that i'll only give you a quarter for like right, yeah. they come out every year so there's value to yeah any sports any games. sports stuff any call of duties any like any major franchise that has come out in the last probably you know seven five seven years you just don't expect anything for it. Yeah. Unless, it, like, unless drastically. you're trading it in like a month. Right. Before. Within the first right. month, I would say. Right. So, well, sometimes they offer like. Yeah, and, so, and I mean they offer bonuses and stuff like that. But you know, for my lifestyle nowadays, you know, we were just talking like I'm gonna buy most of my stuff digital. So trade in values mean jack shit to me anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like for me personally, like. I used to shop at GameStop when I was younger, mm-hmm. and then I just had, like, really bad experiences with certain people at GameStop, so I just stopped. I mean, honestly, that's that's the, the part that... The part that bothered me the most with it wasn't the fact that the practices were shady. Mm-hmm. It was the people making the practices that are kind of shady actually Worse. shady. So I have a couple questions. Uh, that, like, that's a good segue into the whole used game thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you, like, and don't please don't lie to me because I, I already know the answer to this question. Yes. But um, do they ever lie about having 
new copies or not having new copies in stock to try to push old uh, used stuff. Up. Absolutely. And be, I mean, and the the reasoning on their on a business end, the reasoning is sound. Yes, it makes but the sense. way they they way they try to be shisty as shit is what it like. The business sense is the profit margin on a pre-owned game it's compared to it. Yeah, profit margin it's on a, a brand bigger. new game is like I think it's like fifteen to ten to fifteen percent. Right. Okay. The profit margin on a pre-owned game is like forty percent. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's got to be huge. Back, or at least some of them back exactly. <laughs> exactly. Let me, so let me uh, actually uh, talking about that. Actually, um, um, I just had a really shitty experience against GameStop because of that. So, in the mornings, uh, in the GameStop that is near my house, um, the people that, that go there in the morning, I know them. Like I know them for like years upon years, and so I go to the GameStop about two or three days ago, uh, like around 6 p.m., 7 p.m., and I asked him, hey, listen, do you guys have um, Mario Odyssey for the Nintendo Switch? You know, because I was going to buy. He says, hey, listen, no, sorry, we just ran out. We just only have, like, uh, you know, used copies. And I go, uh, okay, you know what? Uh, it is what it is. I'll come back some other day. I go in the next day because the guy had told me that he had no more copies and they were going to come get more copies on, on the next Friday. I go in there with the guys that I know. Oh, don't worry, Marilyn. We got like, you know, 30 copies here. I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> I was so pissed about that, man. <laughs> like... Right. So, Jeff, I have a couple questions. Yeah. Um, my first Sorry. one is... I, I, st- I stepped out of the room to grab a bottle of water, but I- I'm listening. What's up? My question is, why do why does GameStop gut games? Like, what is the purpose of that? We, do, we we get certain marketing for certain titles, but obviously we're not going to get marketing for every single video game that's ever been released. Okay. So the main reasoning behind gutting a copy of a game is to so we can display it for the customer to pick up and take up to the counter to buy it. Okay. I've had um, probably some of my worst experiences because of gutting gut games. Yeah, because I can understand gutting like one or two, but gutting so many copies. Yes. It's like I'm paying for, 60 like, bucks for this game. game like, I want to like, open it. Yeah, for bigger games like Destiny and like Call of Duty and stuff like that, we would gut like t- six to ten copies of the game. Wow. So when we would get down to the wire, like during the holiday season where we would be selling more, the majority of our copies of the game, it would get really crappy because people would be like, well, what the hell? Like, I don't want this. Right. My second question is, how does GameStop determine the value of a used game? Is it like a system, like an online system? It is literally a computer system. The computer tells us what we give for the game. So anytime that anybody's ever said, oh, you know, we have too many copies of this game, blah, 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 that's complete fabrication. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. Yeah. That has literally, it has nothing to do with the quantity of the game that we have in our individual stores. It has a little bit to do with the quantity of the game as a company. Right. Yeah. Like, like if GameStop as a whole has, let's say, across all of its stores, 30,000 copies of Modern Warfare 3 for the Xbox 360, yeah, the value is going to be next to nothing. But if we, you know, across our stores have 1,000 copies, the value probably will go up because... You know, supply, you know, supply and demand. Su- supply and demand, basically, the point it is. But like, each individual store can can do literally nothing to change those prices. No. Now, I have another one. <laughs> so, a couple months back in 2017, I think, uh, Kotaku's Jason Schreier had, like, this big expose on, like, the shady practices of GameStop. Right. And how it actually hurts uh, the people, the employees, the people who work there. Because uh, there's a there's an incentive for them to push the used games because if they don't and if they don't reach certain quotas according to this uh, report, um, they are liable to lose their job. Now you as a GameStop employee, yes. did you ever notice this practice? Was this something that you worried about in terms of making sure you had your livelihood and keeping your job? Yeah, not as much me because I was assistant manager. Okay, so you were shielded from that. No. Okay. Okay. My 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 performance, my weekly performance, ba- was based on the fact of how well I did with pre-orders, trade, pre-owned sales, stuff like that. Yeah. Which is okay. Because they they like push that you know buying like 
disc protection and stuff, which on a new game doesn't make any fucking sense, but they still have to I Um, don't see why. Like, it's like... The disc uh, protection is a lot better than it used to be. Like, I will defend it to that extent, because it used to be it, it would cover everything except breakages. Right. But up until a few years ago, it cover it like we started they started covering breakages so actually one of my worst like, i don't want to get like too much into like the internal business practices of gamestop but yes you know my our, our we do have goals they were set every week we did have things that we needed to focus on i have i never saw anybody be let go from their position because of sales because but of that. they were definitely reprimanded yeah, you gotta feel bad yeah employees a little Absolutely. Because they're, they're the ones that are forced to enforce these, you know, shady policies and stuff like that. Like, I get, like, trying to push used games, like, especially if you do have new copies in stock. Like, I completely get it. Like, hey, we've got a used copy. Trying to sell that used copy. I mean, a lot of times, if, it, if, like, a game gets traded in within, like, the week that it comes out, like, mm-hmm. like we, we're we liable to sell that used copy real damn Absolutely. fast. And GameStop is going to make more money off of that yes. because the profit margin is better. But yeah. in terms of, like, there were situations where we would have, like, deals where it's like, buy two, get one free on pre-owned games. Mm-hmm. But then the new copy of the same game that you would be getting, you know, let's say the new the pre-owned copy is $40, the new copy's on sale for 20 Yeah. But then it's like, oh, well, this deal's going on where it's buy two, get one free. I'm like, I don't fucking care. I'm still saving $20 That's right. if I yeah. bought this game brand new as opposed to buying it pre-owned. And that happened with me. Like, I was going, I think it was uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. It was 20 bucks, right? Brand new. It was on sale. And then I went in there. I checked it on my phone before to make sure they yep. had a new copy. And they did. And I went in there, and I was like, hey, I want a copy of this brand new. And they're like, oh, well, we don't have any new copies. I'm like, well, I just checked your website, and it says you do. And then they're like, and they tried to pull some stuff, you know what I mean? Like, like oh, the website says so, but we don't have it here on this premise. So they, like, yeah. Did yeah, you get it, Dalton, or what here, happened? But we... We have a used copy. I'm like, yeah, I don't want it, though. I don't want it. I'm not buying it if you don't have a new copy. Yeah. And I magically found it. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yep. That, yeah. that, that pissed me off. You see, yeah. It's a real yeah. thing that they do, and it's it's not the employee's fault. And I, I understand that, but I'm sure there's a lot of pressure on them. I, yeah. I think for me, the the one that really annoyed me was um, I was trying to get a used copy of The Will Make Cry 4 uh, for the PS3. And the guy was like, here, you go. And I'm like, he's giving me like a, it wasn't even like the metal case. He was giving me like the plastic case and it was cut in like the, where the plastic part is, where it's like the holder for the sleeve. It was cut in two. I'm like, no, I'm not taking that. You better give me, you better well, give me a better goddamn. The, the yeah, like we, like. The, you can trade in games without the case. Yeah, you can trade in games without cases. So they give, like, we come, we have to make these generic, like, yeah. cases. With the name of the system on it, and then the name of the game and everything. The case doesn't affect game price. Yeah. I know. Yeah, it pop- literally, yeah, because a lot of people, like, that was the one of the biggest questions I got was, oh, I don't have a case for this. Is, is it going to affect how much I get? And I'm, I'm, I'm literally like, no, it never, ever, ever will. So, the, no, the, the thing I've is never, this, like... It, it, sorry, real quick. To... I've never Go bought ahead. used before. What would be the difference between, let's say, a brand new copy of Assassin's Creed Origins would be fifty nine ninety nine as opposed to a used copy the week of launch? Fifty four ninety nine. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. Marlon. That's, that's no, I mean, one thing but that that's where they. And that's. I was gonna say that's where they. Yeah, that's where they try to sell you the rewards card. Yeah. Because the rewards card will give you an additional ten percent off for the pro card, and then now they have the elite version of the card, which will give you yeah. an additional like thirteen dollars off. Yeah. I think like a used copy, for example, like I just I just went and bought it the other day. Um, Breath of the Wild is still sixty dollars brand new. Mm-hmm. It's still fifty four ninety nine used. Yeah, but but if yep. you have the Elite, Elite Pro, Pro is like forty three. Yeah, forty three nine. Yeah. So it's a pretty decent deal, I think, and you you pay thirty dollars a year for it. But if you buy a lot of used games, I think that's actually a really good deal. Yeah, it's it's the the Elite Pro membership makes sense if depending on your buying habits as a gamer. Okay. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's cheaper, I guess. Like, I can pay 30 bucks a year, uh, and if I buy more games, I get them for 44 bucks, right? Brand new, uh, I'll use copies. It's cool, I guess. Like, it's cheaper than uh, Best Buy, 
But me personally, I just don't buy used games. Not that there's anything wrong with no, it. No, neither do I. Really. Yeah, I really don't buy a lot of used stuff anymore either. Unless, unless like, like in the situation of this past week where I wanted to play MLB The Show, yeah. I'm like, oh fuck, it's twenty. It's like eighteen ninety nine used. Yeah. Sure, yeah. I'll go into the you know. Actually, uh, talking about MLB The Show, um, you just uh, reminded me of a funny story that happened to me. Um, so I'm playing Destiny too, and like I see Goose is playing MLB The Show. Um, 17. I'm like, hey, you know, uh, could we, you know, share play so we can actually see how it is? Because I was thinking about buying it at that point. And he was like, yeah, man, I got like, um, I beat the game. It was so good. I, I, be, I do strikeouts like every other game. Like I completely beat the crap out of all the teams. I'm like, yeah, sure. He plays, misses, strike, strike. It's like, oh shit! I don't know what's going on here, man. Uh, on the video, you start looking at the game, that I, I just start sucking so much. Like, yeah, I guess I'm sure. <laughs> like, this is the guy supposed to be like an MLB pro. I'll tell you, I'm 110 so... 10 with the New York Mets right now. Okay. <laughs> God damn it, man. <laughs> Lord Almighty. Oh God. Anyway, it is what it is sometimes, man. You know, GameStop is. Yeah. Um, it's a business at the end of the day, so they yeah, have I to mean, worry about their profits. Yeah, I was just saying, like I wanted to give my kind of my final thoughts on the on the thing like do i regret like working at gamestop no i really loved the job um it had its moments like when we you know when the goals were were you know being forced and we had certain quotas we had to meet and we weren't meeting them and you were getting yelled at because of it and but never fired know, right what's that never fired i uh, know oh, i i do have a question for you when Okay, you know, well, uh, go ahead, because I'm kind of giving my final thoughts, so what's your question? I just want to know if um, store performance changed at all when certain things happened what you? years ago. Like a release of a Call of Duty or something like that. Oh. Did store performance change? Um, yeah. Yeah, they cracked down on a lot more stuff. But, like, how did the store do afterward? Um, dropped quite a bit. So, I did the best I could to salvage it, but... That's all I wanted to know. Yeah, there. I mean, yeah, there. I don't want like I'm not going into detail no, no, on this no, on the podcast. We'll, we'll fill you guys in. We'll later. fill you guys in later. Um, For sure. But there, yeah, there are certain things like you, like I proud, I was proud of myself in the fact that I busted my ass for that company. And even after certain things went down and basically the entire staff changed at my location and I was the only one that stuck around. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I busted my butt. I'm still known in my hometown as the GameStop guy, even yeah. though I haven't worked there in almost six months. Like, I, I, I liked that. I liked the job. I mean, it had its moments. And honestly, there were a lot of perks. I like some of the people that work there now. They're some pretty nice people. Yeah. That work there. There's a, there's the if new you version can, of you, and she's really nice. Right. Um, <laughs> if you can find, like, if you can find, um, a good employee base at, you know, your local GameStop, it can be something that's actually, like, a very cool place to go shop. And after, I after think, all that stuff happened, I didn't even like to go in there anymore, but now right. it's like, I don't mind going in there again. It's kind of right. I think, I think at the end of the day, uh, any business, like, depends on the staff that it has. If Absolutely. the staff is nice, knowledgeable, and works with you to get the things that you want and actually is helpful, then it can be a very enjoyable. Uh, right. If the staff is shitty uh, to begin with and just has a very nasty attitude about things, I mean, I work in you know, customer service and stuff like that, so I know the importance of making the customer feel good and feel, you know, like their money and time and effort is value in the location. And if those things are not met, then people are just going to be like, you know what, I'm done. I'm not going to be dealing with your shit, especially if you're being, uh, even if your practices are shitty and the customers are good, they're like, all right, I'll stick around. But if the practices are shitty and the people are shitty, <laughs> like, nah, forget it. Like, I'm done. <laughs> That's why I stick around with my game stuff because even because some of the stuff that they do I don't like, but I can understand the reason why behind yeah, it. I mean, at the end um, of the day, it's a business. It's business, yeah. So at least I stuck around because the people that work in my game stuff, like I know them, they're good friends of mine, and they help me out a lot. It's like, hey, listen, Marlon, don't worry, we got you a copy right here. We put it in that separate pile. They know the stuff, so you know your stuff is good and covered. So I know that. At the end of the day, if you know we have that connection with people, like you'll be good. But uh, I think Jeff pretty much said it best. You know, it's like it's a business, and business has to take care of their profits. And if the profits are not being made, they will make cuts. <laughs> right. But yeah, I think 
that's a good stop. But yeah, I think that's a good stopping point with GameStop. Like, like you know, Goose said at the beginning of this, I didn't really want to... Uh, you got an um, auto soft, yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to, I don't I don't want to piss off anybody. I don't want to have anybody And I still do some shopping at GameStop. Yeah. Though, so. I was in there earlier today. I you know, I return when I returned that controller, I st- I didn't like oh, I'm just going to take my money and go elsewhere. You know, I still put my money into it and, you know. GameStop saves me from having to drive to Best Buy or rely on the mail. So. Also true. Yeah, that helps. But um I think that was a good. I'll say, all in all, yeah, I think I'll be, that's I'll be back all in two minutes for you guys this week. Oh, um, we're, we're John, done? do you want to do you want to wrap up the racing series since that ended last night? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, um, <laughs> round ten racing series. We raced obviously we raced ten rounds. That's what, means. Um, <laughs> that's what rounds yeah. means. <laughs> so the points leader didn't end up making it to the race. He had prior engagements. He had a pretty good lead. Um, Lee Goose barely was, kept on Lee Goose, to it. He was second in the points. Had to finish third to win the championship. Or better. What did he finish? He finished fourth. So oh! Kate oh. hung on to the championship by one It was point. literally one point. A point. So, and that's how the series ended. Uh, we had a Canadian win it. Unfortunate. Fucking Canadian. Unfortunately. I mean... <laughs> no, nah, he's a good friend no, of mine. He's, We've he's, been playing together he, since Gran Turismo 5. He's so, a good dude. Yeah. So that's... The series he, is over. Marlon wrapped it up with another last place finish. So... Don't, everything don't, went, don't. Everything went according to plan. In that yeah. regard. Um, yeah. I got uh, actually talking about the racing series. I got to go back and get that wheel fixed. I'm like, uh, like I'm not so even looking forward to this. It's over. We'll be uh, doing another one eventually. We're gonna take a little break um, before the next one. It'll be a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's it's something that we want to. I'd lo- I'd love to do another one. Oh, but yeah, give it give it like a couple months and, and we'll yeah, we'll, gonna, we'll wrap. Be we'll, a little bit. Yeah. Um, so what do we got? What do we got streaming this week, guys? I I apologize. I wanted to apologize. I know. You know, we just finally got the scheduled nail down, but I was not able to make my Friday stream. Um, my daughter was not feeling well, and I had her all weekend because I was off, so, um... Plus, we all told Jeff we'd play hey. Destiny with him, and we all bailed. That is also true, but it's <laughs> yeah, alright. I, I understand. He texted, I was like, yeah, but no. Like, that, that, that's the thing for me. I was like, nah, I'm not going to play Destiny. I'm <laughs> way too deep in Monster Hunter World, man. Sorry. Yeah, You're on your own. Places, so I had an excuse not to play. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, we, uh... Uh, but yeah, so, I mean, we'll, I want to do something this week. Uh, Goose, are you possibly interested in doing a uh, Ghost Recon stream on Friday? Um, Yeah, I don't have anything planned for Friday. Okay. Um, Yeah, but yeah, I'll, I'll be totally you, down. And then I'm you're doing your know. stream on Saturday as well? Absolutely, yeah. We got to this uh, one uh, junction in the game, which that's one of my favorite parts. I won't okay. go into it, but yeah, cool. I'm looking forward to it. Plus, yeah, like, we had Goose's... Yeah, uh, first successful stream this past Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> I streamed on Thursday, which was pretty Yeah, fun. he played the entire game of Shadow of the Colossus yeah. in, one in one sitting. So what, like three hours and 15 minutes, something yeah, like, like that? Yeah, three hours and 15 minutes with all the cutscenes. I thought that was pretty... It was, it was good. Reasonable. It was like, it was. yeah, that was like perfect length for yeah. a stream like that. It was that. not my smoothest playthrough, which sucks because that's the one on our channel now, but... But it's all right. <laughs> it's, it's all good. Um, but it's yours, yeah. Are you going to be doing any more Thursday night streams or are you going to take a break for a while? If I, I have mean, something to play, I don't have anything to play at the moment. Yeah, you, sh- you, what you should eventually do is pick up a capture card and so you can stream your Switch. I've got the capture card. You have the capture card? Yeah, that's what we did Oldies and Coldies with. Oh, well, shit. You should play some oh, Switch stuff are, on I'm the gonna, channel. We're going to try to record Oldies and Coldies this week, the second episode. Yeah, I'm looking okay, forward to that. Cool. I'm looking forward to that. Mario Party. Mario Party, good choice. So we're going to be drinking beer, playing Mario Party. That so will be super fun. Yeah, look forward to that on our channel as Just, well soon. Uh, I get pretty pissed at Mario Party. So, Why? I'm excited. Let's see how this goes. I may walk out. Yes. He may these in coldies. But yeah, and I will also I like obviously you, it will be up by the time any of you hear this. But I'm gonna be doing a, a weekly gaming update. I don't have a lot to talk about this week, but you'll 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 understand why. I mean, the big thing that I wanted to I wanted to save for the pot. Like the big news story this week was the legislation in Hawaii about loot box games. But awesome. I wanted to I wanted to save that for. Podcast topic. Okay. I think it would be something that we all should actually have a discussion about rather than me just spewing it off in a news segment. So Wait, I have a couple things, a couple things I'm gonna, that you're going to hear about: um, a possible remaster coming back and an acquisition by another company. Did so. you put more Fallout Boy music in this new one? Uh, I wasn't planning on it because you bitched at me so much the last time. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it I, was just, I was just fucking. With you. I mean, I really don't like Fallout Boy, but I was. Just... <laughs> 
<laughs> it's better than country music, so. But uh, that's all we have for you this week, guys. On that note, that was a good note to end it on. But uh, thank you, Marlon and Goose, for joining. As always. Bye, everybody. Always. All right, and Dalton, JB, we are out. See you guys next week. Later, guys.